Niacin is an important vitamin or organic coenzyme in the cellular respiration process and its specific role is to transfer hydrogen atoms and electrons from the sugar molecule to oxygen, ultimately to oxygen in this process. Now, once the ATPs are produced by the process of cellular respiration, these ATPs, just like quarters that you've got from the change machine from your $10 bill, these quarters called ATP can now be used to provide the energy for the biochemical reactions occurring in the cells of our body, such as muscle contraction. Now, in order for this ATP to release its energy, uh, it requires, like all chemical reactions, an enzyme called ATPase. ACE is typical ending of enzymes. And it also involves a coenzyme, calcium. Calcium assists this ATPase enzyme in splitting that third phosphate. The third phosphate off the ATP is split, and that turns ATP into ADP and phosphate, and it releases energy. That's the energy that provides the power for muscle contraction. That's the energy that provides the power for cell growth, for cell division, for the generation of nerve impulses, and for all the biochemical reactions occurring in living things. Uh, living things, including humans, can break apart three types, three principal types of organic compounds to release energy in order to make that high energy nucleotide called ATP that provides the fuel, the uh, power for all the biochemical processes occurring in living things. Uh, living things primarily break down carbohydrates as a source of energy. Carbohydrates are sugars, but they also break down some fats uh, in order to uh, release energy and make ATP. And thirdly, they break down very uh, small amounts of proteins uh, uh, that can be broken apart to release energy in order to make ATP. We're going to first describe how cells break apart carbohydrates, sugars, such as glucose, in order to make ATP, and then we'll come back and see how fats and proteins can be turned into sugars so that they can also be broken apart to release energy to make ATP. Carbohydrates are the centerpiece for understanding this, and then we'll see how the fats and proteins feed in to the process of breaking apart sugars. <laughs> now, in breaking apart uh, uh, sugars, carbohydrates, to release energy to make ATP, this occurs in two phases, two parts. The first series of reactions are called anaerobic respiration. The whole process, of course, is called cellular respiration. What is anaerobic? Aerobic means with air, with oxygen. When you put the prefix a or an in front of a word, it means without. So anaerobic respiration reactions, which occur in the cytoplasm of the cell, do not require oxygen. These reactions do not require oxygen. They can occur whether there's oxygen present or not present, whether it's available to the cell or not available to the cell. <clears throat> the second series of reactions, the second series of reactions are called aerobic respiration reactions. They require oxygen and they occur in the mitochondria of the cell, the powerhouses of the cell. It, let's, let's take a look at anaerobic respiration. The first series of reactions of anaerobic respiration are called glycolysis. It's a very appropriate word. Glyco means sugars. Glucose, glyco means sugars. Lysis is a Greek root that means to split apart. So literally, glycolysis is the splitting apart of sugars like glucose. They're literally split right in half, and that releases energy. Now, we begin with a glucose molecule. <clears throat> and in order to help us understand what's going on, let me represent this glucose molecule by drawing six carbon atoms in a row. One, two, three, four, five, six. After all, glucose is C6H12O6. It's six carbon atoms. <clears throat> Basically, glucose is going to be split right in half 
forming two sugars that are three carbon atoms big. We call these sugars pyruvate sugars. So here's one and here's the other. So what we've done is in, in uh, glycolysis is that the sugar, the glucose, has been split right in the half forming two sugars that are each three carbon atoms big. These are called pyruvate sugars. They'll often just call them pyruvate for short. And they are also commonly called pyruvic acid. It's unfortunate that the books do not agree on how they refer to these sugars. And literally in the same book, you may see these sugars referred to in one paragraph as pyruvate and another paragraph as pyruvic acid. But it means the exact same thing. Now, just to examine this in a little bit more detail, the very first step in breaking apart the sugar molecule to release energy to make ATP is a very bizarre step. Why it's bizarre is because the very first step requires that we use two molecules of ATP to activate this process, to initiate this process. This is called the activation step. The activation step. Now you might say, well, why is this bizarre? It's very bizarre for the following reason. The entire purpose of breaking apart a sugar molecule is to release energy in order to make ATP. And yet, the very first step in this process of cellular respiration requires that we use up two ATP molecules just to get this process started. But let me give you a couple of examples of why this is not such an unusual thing. It occurs all the time. Let's use the uh, first example. Let's consider your car. Now, of course, what provides the energy, the, uh, the energy for your car to run? The answer is gas. Gasoline provides the energy for your car to run. Without gasoline, your car's not going anywhere. But if gasoline is the source of energy in your car, why do you need a battery? What's the purpose of a battery then? The purpose of the battery is to initiate that chemical reaction of combustion where your car starts breaking apart the gasoline to release energy. So no matter how much gasoline, which contains stored energy, you have in your car, you've got to provide an initial spark of energy which is provided by your battery to begin the release of that energy from the gasoline. Without that battery, your car is not going anywhere, no matter how much gasoline is in your car. Here's a second example. Let's say you wanted to build a fire. So you gather some wood together to make a fire. The wood is the fuel for the fire. So you gather the wood, you're all set to make a fire. But what do you need? a spark. You need a match. You need a spark of energy to begin that uh, breaking apart that combustion process of burning the wood to release energy to form a fire and give off heat. So you need a spark of energy. It's even been said that this concept of needing energy to release energy even applies in the business world. You'd say, what do you mean it applies in the business world? So if, uh, if you've ever heard of, if you know somebody who has a business, why does anybody start a business? To make money, right? So you start a business to make money. But have you ever heard the expression, it takes money to make money? If you don't have any money, it's hard to begin a business. You can't even buy business cards. So you have to have a little bit of money just to begin your business, which is for the purpose of making money. We need a little bit of energy to begin this process, which in the end will generate lots of energy to make ATP. So the very first step, we actually use a two ATPs to begin this process. The phosphates from the ATP are technically attached to the sugar, forming phosphoglyceraldehyde. <clears throat> we'll kind of skip that and move to pyruvate sugar. So basically, after we've activated this process, the sugar, the glucose, will be split in half, forming two three-carbon sugars called pyruvate sugars. Now, as this glucose is split apart, two things happen. 
one thing that happens is energy is released. And that energy that is released, that energy that is released is used to form four ATPs. Four ATPs are formed. And I'm going to draw them like this. So I show four ATPs. Why did I draw two of them over here and two of them over here? The four ATPs have been produced, but the first two ATPs, right, from the release of energy by breaking apart the sugar, energy was released to make ATP molecules. The first ATP molecules, the first two that are produced, pays back the two ATPs that we required just to